Are you wondering how to get rid of that belly bloat? And why does it even keep happening in the first place? Well, stick around because I'm gonna tell you where it comes from and what to do about it. What's up you guys? My name is Dr. Jessica and I am a naturopathic doctor, an acupuncturist, and a health coach. For natural health advice, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can find out when I post new videos every week. Let's get into it. I get so many questions in office about belly bloating, a poor digestion, gas and cramping, and I'm gonna share with you the top reasons as to why it's occurring and what we should do about it. Some of the most common causes really have to do a lot with your diet and the types of foods that you're eating. Could be that you're eating a lot of things that are really just gas producing, things like beans, onions, and even some brassic vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower. A lot of times, no matter how you cook them, for some people, these will always kind of cause a little bit of gas or bloating. The next thing to look at is, do you actually have any type of food intolerances? Like, are you a little bit lactose intolerant? In which case, things like cheeses and dairy are just gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable, if you know what I mean. Other types of food intolerances or what we think of as food sensitivity Activities also can lead to a little bit of gas and bloating because sometimes your body just is not able to process them properly and digest them efficiently. Other causes can be for something as simple as you're eating too fast and you're swallowing too much air or you're not chewing your food well enough. So you're having a problem with the mechanical aspect and the breakdown of the food. Other causes could be things like constipation because quite frankly, you're full of you know stuff and it's backed up in the system. And in our gut lining, we have thousands and millions of bacteria that are constantly breaking down that food and as a byproduct are producing gas. And then another biggie is just good old fashioned fluid retention. Could be to having too much salt in your diet, could be for some of us women, kind of fluctuating with our hormone levels can cause some fluid retention as well. Let's break some of these down. First step would be to identify and avoid some of your known triggers. So as good as cheese tastes, if you're lactose intolerant, either you're gonna need to take uh, an additional enzyme like a lactase, or you're gonna have to give up the cheese. I know, it sucks, but you, you gotta weigh it out. So gold standard for really identifying foods that are truly are triggers is what we call the elimination challenge diet. What is this? This is where you go through step by step and kind of food by food, taking out foods that you think may be the culprit and then keeping them out of your diet for a period of time and then reintroducing them one by one and slowly engaging your symptoms as you go. Really for any food sensitivity or even for food allergies, this really is the gold standard. Now it takes quite a bit of time, quite a bit of dedication, and sometimes it can take a really long time and it can be a little bit difficult trying to adjust your diet in the meantime. Other ways around this is if you talk to your naturopath or your functional medicine doctor, a lot of docs will order something like a food sensitivity panel that looks more at an antibody called IgG versus IgE. I won't get into all the details, but there are a lot of specialty functional medicine, medicine testings that deal with this. I've used it a lot in office and clinically, I have seen huge changes to people's digestion just by getting to identify some of the foods that they really do have a problem with. Now the food sensitivity testing, it doesn't involve doing a blood draw in office. So talk to your functional medicine doctor, your naturopathic doctor, and ask about what the options are for helping you to identify some of the issues that are happening with your digestion. Comment below and let me know if you already know what some of your food triggers are and what they are. I'm always fascinated by what people are allergic to. You'd be surprised on what comes up sometimes on the food sensitivity testing. I also recommend that you keep a food diary. This is not only what you've eaten for the past week or so, but it's also the symptoms you may have. And it can vary from anything to gas and bloating and digestion or maybe headaches and things like that. that that is a good way to also kind of track what's going on and maybe make some connections that you didn't realize were there. Be sure to check the link below. I have created a food diary that also is a symptom tracker that will help you identify any food sensitivities or food intolerances that you might have. So get that free download below. It's really helpful and this is the same thing that I give to my patients as well. Now let's talk about fluid retention. We've all heard the old adage that our body is mostly made up of water, which is totally true. But how much water we maintain, you know, versus sweating it out or urinating it out, totally depends on what we're eating sometimes. So if we're eating a lot of things that are super high in sodium, the body tends to hang on to more water. 
other times hormones can have an effect of how much water you kind of hang on to as well so ladies know exactly what I'm talking about when that time of the month comes and they're bloating for no reason one way to counteract this is making sure that you're getting enough water daily that you're staying hydrated and that your body has enough water to help flush out the toxins and get rid of that excess bloating it sounds a little counter counterintuitive but sometimes you need to take in a little bit more water to help the body kind of flush things out. Otherwise, if we're tending towards the more dehydrated end, our body will start to hang on to every drop of water that you give to it. So make sure, good rule of thumb is to take your weight in pounds divided by two and drink that amount in ounces. Of course, actual hydration needs are going to vary depending on activity levels and what you're eating as well. For my ladies with hormonal building, talk to your functional medicine doctor just to see if you need to balance out your hormones a little bit. This can be done either diet and lifestyle and exercise or even sometimes we may need to bring in a few herbal remedies to help with that as well. I mentioned earlier that constipation can also be a reason why you tend to have some abdominal bloating or distension or poor digestion. One of the best ways to help with constipation is to exercise, is to get up and get moving. You can think of the intestines as a long tube that have muscle in them. And that kind of contraction of the muscle is what we call peristalsis. And that keeps food and things moving through the tube, so to speak. If we are not getting enough, enough activity, there's not enough blood flow necessarily going to the intestines and feeding that muscle that helps with peristalsis. So the more activity you can do, the better your digestion is gonna be and the more that's gonna help encourage the peristalsis. So get up and get moving. If you want more information about getting started with exercises or what things to do, make sure you check out my virtual gym. I will leave information below on how to get started. And if you want to know about exercising at home, check out my video below and you can always email me. Another thing that has to do with constipation is making sure that you're getting enough fiber. The fiber also helps to push out things in the track. So making sure you're getting enough fiber is definitely important as well. Of course, I have to put a plug in to make sure that you're checking in with your doctor, your healthcare provider, your naturopath, your functional medicine specialist, whomever that may be, that you're making sure that you just rule out some of the more serious causes of abdominal bloating or, or abdominal pain as well. Things like IBD, Crohn's disease, ulcerative of colitis, SIBO, things like that, that you just want to make sure that you have your checkup. Okay, PSA is done. Another thing that you might need to check into, and again, check in with your doctor first, is you might need some digestive enzymes. We talk a lot about having too much stomach acid, but a lot of times we don't talk enough about not having proper enzymes or enough kind of, think of it as, as power to digest things when things kind of go through our system and don't get enough exposure to things like the hydrochloric acid and some of our other digestive enzymes, it can produce more gas and bloating. So check in with your doc, see, talk to them about a digestive enzyme or even a hydrochloric acid supplement. All right, you guys, I hope this video was helpful. As always, leave any questions down below. Make sure that you like this video and leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you soon. Bye.